Welcome back to the channel. The focus on this week will be in osteoporosis, or what's commonly known as brittle bone disease, which is significantly more common in postmenopausal women. Some of the key risk factors include a low BMI, being female, advancing age, history of rheumatoid arthritis, previous steroid usage, and smoking and alcohol excess, with a number of smaller risk factors including premature menopause and certain endocrine conditions. CKD and a sedentary lifestyle can also contribute towards it, as well as medications including PPIs and SSRIs. But first, we must discuss fragility fractures. The reason why osteoporosis is so important is in relation to fragility fractures, which the World Health Organization defined as a fracture that results from mechanical forces of such low level that wouldn't normally cause a fracture. Thus, if a patient over 75 is deemed to have a fragility fracture, they are essentially seem to be osteoporotic and should be treated as necessary without a DEXA assessment. If a patient is younger than 75, then a DEXA scan should be arranged, with the results of which inputted into an online calculator called a FRAX assessment, which gives you an idea of whether to treat or not. What about risk assessing and preventing osteoporosis? If a patient has not had a fragility fracture, the NICE recommends assessment of osteoporosis and risk prevention in males above 75 and in females above 65. Younger patients with some of the risks aforementioned should also be considered. NICE recommend the usage of a FRAX or a Q fracture, both of which give you a 10-year fracture risk in patients aged between 40 and 90, taking into account their demographics, risk factors, and with the option to add in DEXA values. With these results, a patient is either deemed to be low risk where there's reaffirmation of lifestyle advice, intermediate risk where you can consider a DEXA scan if it's not already done, or high risk where bone protection is usually offered. If a DEXA scan was included in the results, then it'd either be low or high risk, with low risk being reaffirming lifestyle and to reassure, with high risk to consider and or continue treatment. DEXA scans provide a numerical value to provide a subjective assessment of bone mineral density. For your exams, you really only need to know about the T-scores, which are usually negative numbers derived into three categories, where it's above minus 1.0, where it's normal, if it's between minus 1 and minus 2.5, the patient's osteopenic, and if it's below minus 2.5, the patient is osteoporotic. A patient may have different T-scores in different bones. For example, a patient may have a T-score of minus 1.8 in their vertebrae and minus 2.9 in their hip, suggesting osteopenia in the vertebrae and hip osteoporosis. One key element is those patients on long-term steroids that are at higher risk of developing osteoporosis. NICE have adopted the Royal College of Physicians approach in which a patient is deemed to be high risk of steroid-induced osteoporosis if they are taking the equivalent of more than 7.5 mg of prednisolone per day for at least three months. The crucial part here is that prevention should be considered early, where bone prevention should be initiated at the onset of steroids and not to wait to a fracture to occur. Additionally, and confusingly, the T-scores for these patients also slightly vary, where NICE recommend the usage of bone protection in patients over 65 on steroids if they've had a fragility fracture, but if they're younger than 65 and on long-term steroids, then the patient should be offered a DEXA scan where a score over 0 is considered normal. If it's between 0 and minus 1.5, the patient will be scanned again in 3 years. And if it's lower than minus 1.5, then to offer bone protection. Well, what about management? All patients should be recommended to be optimised within the regards of vitamin D and calcium. First-line bone protection, however, for osteoporosis is bisphosphonate therapy, with alendronate the drug of choice. However, many patients cannot tolerate the side effects of which include esophagitis, esophageal ulcers, and some patients developing fever and myalgia in response. There is also some link to osteonecrosis of the jaw. Etidoronate and resendronate are second-line bisphosphonates if alundronate is not tolerated, but may cause similar side effects. Patients are subsequently advised to swallow the tablets whole 30 minutes before breakfast, sitting upright for at least 30 minutes afterwards, to try and prevent some of the gastric side effects. There are some forms of bisphosphonate, such as zelendronate, which, for example, are given as infusions over a longer period of time, which some patients may benefit from. If bisphosphonates aren't tolerated, strontium or raloxifene are usually considered. Strontium works by increasing the deposition of bone by promoting osteoblasts and restricting osteoclasts. It should only really be prescribed by specialists given that there's a risk of cardiovascular disease and skin reactions. Raloxifene is considered a selective estrogenic receptor modulator and has good evidence in supporting in spinal and hip osteoporosis, but again, does cause thrombotic events. 
Denosumab, which is a newer drug, is a rank ligand inhibiting monoclonal antibody that helps reduce osteoclast production is given as an injection. In some centres, this is included as second-line treatment after alendronate, ahead of strontium. There are alternatives, such as teriparatide, which is a variant of the parathyroid hormone, and HRT, which could be considered particularly if there's additional vasomotor symptoms in peri- and postmenopausal women, but patients need to be counselled about that separately. With regards to treatment, patients are usually advised for a review of treatment after five years, where bisphosphonate holiday may be considered, which, in turn, may lead to a reassessment of fracture risk. Well, that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed the video and this summation of osteoporosis and its management plans. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below and be sure to subscribe and share it amongst your friends. Head over to the Facebook group and Instagram page too where there's loads more revision content available. But otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.